what you see here is prop. Nothing in any of this. But what this prop is meant to do is to remind you of an experiment that we did very early in the school year, which was an acid-base titration. Uh, because today we're going to look at the acid-base titration in just a little bit more detail. Um, so, we've got the titrant in the burette. We've got the analyte, or whatever it is we're analyzing, in the beaker. And um, we're trying to calculate the molarity of the um, analyte solution based upon when we reach an equivalence point. And remember, at equivalence, moles of base are identical to moles of acid. And we choose an indicator that will change color when we reach the equivalence point so that we know that we're there. And then by knowing the number of moles of titrant we've used to neutralize the volume of analyte, then we can calculate the molarity or how many moles of analyte we have in that certain volume. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and more specifically, what we're going to talk about is as we add acid, well, in this case, what did we do? We did acid. We started with acid, an unknown concentration of hydrochloric. And we added a known concentration of sodium hydroxide. So as we add the sodium hydroxide, to this acid solution, how does the pH of this acid solution change as we slowly add the sodium hydroxide? So that's really what we're doing today. We are tracking the pH changes during an acid-base titration. The title today is titration. Okay, so let's just do a very typical acid-base reaction, um, familiar. So let's say HCl plus sodium hydroxide. So we've got strong acid, strong base. Reacts to give us acid plus base gives us water. Plus salt. And in this case, our salt is going to be sodium chloride. Acid plus base gives us water plus salt. Okay, now at equivalence, okay, at the equivalence point. In a titration, the moles of base are in the sto stoichiometric relationship or equal to the moles of an acid. Now, in this case, they are exact because they are in a one to one mole ratio. So at equivalence, moles of base are equal to moles of acid. Now, at equivalence, I have added, let's say, enough sodium hydroxide, the exact amount of moles of sodium hydroxide to exactly match stoichiometrically the number of moles of HCl that are there. I have not gone over the equivalence point. I have exactly the same amount of moles of sodium hydroxide as I do hydrochloric acid in that beaker. Are, is there any of this left in the beaker at equivalence? No, there's not. Because all of the HCl has reacted 
with the sodium hydroxide that has been added. And the only thing we have at equivalence is water and salt. There are, there is no more acid or base in the solution. Moles of base equal moles of acid and in solution, there is only water and salt. That's it. So at equivalence, I've got water, I've got sodium ion, and I've got chloride ion, and that's all I have. Now, if I go over equivalence, and I begin to add more sodium hydroxide, so in our case, you know, we use the indicator um, phenolphthalein, is that um, if you got a real bright color pink, you went way over the equivalence point. And then in that case, you guys, not only do you have water and salt, but you also have a whole bunch of sodium hydroxide too, however much extra you've, had, you've added. Okay, so at the equivalence point, moles of base are equal to moles of acid, and in the solution, the only thing we have there is water and salt. Now, we are going to make some titration curves. We're going to make three of them. So if I was you, um, I would copy three of these things down. Okay, what, so what I want you to do is I want you to make three of these. Um, I want you to make three of these graphs. So what I want you to do is I just want you to pause it as soon as I explain the axes. And then just make three of them on your paper because we're going to do three separate ones. And, and that will be the easiest way of doing this. Okay, so on our y-axis we have pH, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And on our x-axis we have the mills of the analyte, whatever the analyte may be. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. So we are slowly adding what's in the burette into the beaker to uh, get to equivalence. Okay, so what happens to the pH as we do this? Now the first one that we're going to do is we are going to do a strong acid, strong base titration. So it is going to be a um, strong acid, being titrated with a strong base. Okay, so that could be, for instance, just so that we've got an example here, HCl and NaOH. Okay, let's do it like that. Okay, now, We've got our beaker of hydrochloric acid. So when it starts, you guys, what should the pH of the beaker be? Should it be really high? Should it be neutral? Should it be really low? Okay, the pH of a strong acid should be pretty darn low. So our starting point is going to be down here, right, our initial pH. And so I'm just going to do this thing. talk about it. Okay, now, when you look at a Princeton review, it might not be exact, but let's just <clears throat> do our best here. Okay, now, we're adding sodium hydroxide. Adding, 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 adding. And then what happens is that we reach the stoichiometric ratio. And by definition, you guys, halfway, the exact center point of this section is the equivalence point. Now, for this particular one, it should be there. It should be at pH 7. 
So this is our equivalence. And the pH is equal to 7 at equivalence. And then, of course, why do we get the pH going up, 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 up? Because we continue adding sodium hydroxide. So it stays low, 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 right? We still have plenty of hydrochloric, plenty of hydrochloric. And now we've hit the stoichiometric ratio where our moles of sodium hydroxide and our moles of hydrochloric acid are the same. And so, of course, our pH is going to change until we get to the point now where all of our HCl has been uh, reacted with sodium hydroxide, and now all we're doing is adding excess sodium hydroxide. Now, why is the pH 7 at equivalence? Well, remember, at equivalence, water and salt. If this is HCl and NaOH, what is the salt that's there at equivalence? Sodium chloride is there at equivalence, cation of a strong acid, anion of a strong, no, cation of a strong base, anion of a strong acid, neither of these have an effect on pH, and so at equivalence, the pH is 7. Okay, do you see where I'm going with this? All right, acid with a strong base. So, a weak Acid titrated with a strong base. So let's leave our strong base as sodium hydroxide. And let's make our weak acid something we're very familiar with. Let's make it vinegar, acetic acid, HC2H3O2. Okay. Now, um, if we begin with exactly the same molarity as we started with the HCl, the pH of our acetic acid is going to be slightly higher because it's a weak acid. So given the same molarities at our starting point, we're going to start this thing up just a little tiny bit higher because I'm making it so that the, the molarities are equal, so we can make that generalization. Okay, so here we go. That is equivalent. What is the pH at equivalence? It's about nine. So why is the pH at equivalence higher for this weak acid strong base? Well, what's in solution? Water and salt. What's our salt? Sodium acetate. Cation of a strong base. It's not doing anything. But anion of the weak acid conjugate base of the weak acid. And what is this conjugate base going to do? It is going to react with water, take a hydrogen from water, leaving hydroxide in solution. And so at equivalence, our pH is going to be higher because the salt 
that's there from this weak acid strong base actually contains the conjugate base of this weak acid. And so this thing is going to react with water. Okay. Let's do the last one. Okay, this time we are going to do a strong acid. Okay, read about it in the Princeton Review. 